When a country is about to fall, there will be demons in troubled times, and when a country is about to fall, there will be true people who will help the world novel keywords. Changxing no pop-ups, Changxing TXT complete collection download, Changxing latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Dark Night Thunder. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Dark Night Thunder In 890 AD, a certain mountain village was located in Dengzhou. In early spring, at midnight, there is a sudden change in the weather, with strong winds and dense dark clouds. Changsheng was originally lying next to Lao Huang. When he heard the howling and piercing wind, he quickly propped up his arms and limped to the door. He opened the wooden door of the dilapidated house and looked up at the sky. Seeing the wind and clouds changing color and the mountains and rain about to come, Changsheng had to turn around and return to his house. He took off the raincoat and hat hanging on the wall and prepared to go out. However, when he turned around and saw old Huang lying on the haystack, he hesitated again. Old Huang is not a human, he is a scalper. He doesn't know how old old Huang really is. He only knows that when he was picked up, old Huang happened to have a calf. Mr. Wang saved him with old Huang's milk. He is fourteen this year, and old Huang has also grown a mouthful of teeth. He is very old. Recently, old Huang has been in a very bad condition, lying down for a long time, and the water grass has not entered for seven or eight days. Changsheng was worried about leaving Lao Huang alone at home, but he couldn't help but leave because it was going to thunder soon, and he couldn't stay in the village during the thunder. Just as Changsheng hesitated, a woman's voice came from outside the house, shouting, Little cripple, why are you still dragging around? Haven't you seen the weather change? Get out of here now. Changsheng, it's going to thunder again. You go out and hide quickly, said the immature female voice. Brother, what brother? I've told you so many times, stay away from that broom star, the woman scolded loudly. I can't find my parents' wild seed, a wicked and wicked thing. Wang Matsi shouldn't have picked him up in the first place. He was beaten to death, not to mention it, and even implicated us in the same situation. Upon hearing the screams outside, Changsheng had to leave the room, close the door with his back, and without looking at the mother and daughter, he walked east with his head down, wearing a raincoat and a bamboo hat. He and Lao Huang's house are at the easternmost end of the village, facing the mountains and forests to the east. He walked from the front, and the woman cried from behind, Oh my goodness, they all say that there is a head of injustice and a head of debt. If you want to strike, strike accurately and don't burden us anymore. For the woman's curse, Changsheng did not retaliate, not because he was timid, but because he felt guilty, because the woman did not mistreat him. His arrival did bring disaster to this village called Wang Jekwang. Since the handlebar style Wang Matsi picked him up, the peace and tranquility of the village have been disrupted. He lived in the village for fourteen years, and during these fourteen years, the village has been struck by lightning multiple times, seven or eight times, both before and after, moreover, the location of each lightning strike was always near his home, and it was not only him and Wang Matsi who were unlucky, but also his neighbors who were frequently affected. Although there were no fatalities or injuries, the walls of the house were often damaged, and many chickens, ducks, geese, and dogs were also killed by the earthquake. Just as Changsheng was walking with his head down, a girl's scream suddenly came from behind, ah! Upon hearing the girl's scream, Changsheng quickly turned his head back and saw the six- or seven-year-old girl next to the woman pointing behind the house with a frightened expression on her face. The woman was also startled by the girl's sudden scream and scolded with some complaints, Damn girl, what's the name of a ghost? Eyes, the girl was frightened and panicked, two bright red big eyes, right behind Changsheng's room. Listening to the girl's words, the woman and Changsheng both shifted their gaze to the back of the house. Although the sky was dark, they couldn't miss their fingers, but when they looked closely, they didn't notice anything. If I dare to lie again, I'll tear your mouth open, the woman said. Although she didn't see anything, she was also a bit panicked as she dragged the girl westward. Let's go, hurry back to the house. 
the girl was dragged by the woman and stumbled. Mom, I'm not lying. I really saw two big red eyes, as if they had jumped into the woods to the east. The woman didn't answer and dragged the girl into the west courtyard. After the woman closed the courtyard door, Changshin withdrew his gaze, put on a raincoat, and walked into the forest. If it were someone else, he would be afraid to leave home in the middle of the night, but he is not afraid for a long time. He has become accustomed to it. Although not every time there is lightning strike, in order to be on the safe side, he has been hiding in every wind or rain these years. As the saying goes, a long illness becomes a cure. After experiencing it many times, Changsheng has learned to look at the sky. Usually, when it rains or thunders, dark clouds are often higher than the ground, while the clouds that cause lightning strikes are much lower, as if they are just above the head. Realizing that the situation tonight belonged to the latter, Changsheng accelerated his walking speed. His left leg had been broken by lightning-struck bricks and stones when he was seven years old. The mountain village lacked medical treatment and did not receive timely treatment, resulting in poor healing. He felt a bit limp while walking, and the faster he walked, the more obvious the limp became. Entering the forest, the first thing he saw was a cemetery in the village, but his destination was not the cemetery, but a cave three miles northeast of the cemetery. The cave is located on the mountainside. As soon as Changsheng climbed into the cave, heavy rain poured down, accompanied by dazzling lightning and roaring thunder. The cave is not big, only five feet deep, barely able to shelter from the rain. As long as I lean against the stone wall, I am worried as I watch the heavy rain outside. He is not worried about himself, but about Lao Huang at home. All the signs indicate that Lao Huang is already in his old age and may not have much time left. It is impossible to extend Lao Huang's life. The only thing he can do now is to find ways to give him some refined food. But last year there was a severe drought, the harvest was not good, and now it is early spring, with a shortage of crops. More than 30 households in the village can only rely on rice bran and wild vegetables to satisfy their hunger, and even people are starving. Where can we go to get Lao Huang exquisite food? After much consideration, I finally remembered how many pounds of beans were left at home, but those pounds were originally kept for spring plowing as seeds. If eaten, the seeds would be gone during spring plowing. As he was pondering and worried, a sudden thunderbolt came from outside. The lightning strike happened directly above his hiding cave, causing the surrounding earth to shake and the eternal life in the cave to be startled. Before he could come to his senses, there was another loud roar, followed by another, one after another, one after another. The violent vibrations caused the rocks to fall and dust to fly in the cave. Although he had experienced similar situations before his lifetime, it was the first time he had encountered such a fierce lightning strike tonight. Just as he was worried that the cave would collapse and wanted to escape, a deafening roar came again, and the violent vibration and impact knocked him unconscious. After an unknown amount of time, Changsheng woke up leisurely, feeling a headache that was about to crack. He covered his head and sat up, turning his head to look outside the cave. It was still dark outside, but the wind had stopped and the rain had also stopped. The air after the rain was filled with a faint earthy smell. After a moment of breathing, Changsheng regained consciousness and stood up with his arms outstretched. At this moment, I suddenly noticed a circular object on the ground. I reached out to pick it up and walked out of the cave to take a closer look. It was about the size of a palm and was an irregular circular shape. At night, I couldn't see the object clearly, and it seemed to be green-black. It was cold to the touch, hard but not heavy. He has visited this cave countless times before and has never seen this thing before. It must be someone who has visited before and left it here. Due to the urgent need to go back and take care of Lao Huang, Changsheng did not continue to stay in the cave. Before leaving, he casually stuffed the armor piece into the stone crevice on the right side of the cave entrance. It was already five o'clock when he returned to his residence. 
To Changsheng's surprise, Old Huang swept away the previous days of lethargy and stood up to welcome him as he pushed the door open. Seeing that Old Huang had a little spirit, he was overjoyed and jumped onto the adobe bed. He found the bag of bean seeds in the basket hanging from the beam, and then brought water from the well. He ground soybean milk from the stone mill in the yard. When Changsheng grinds soybean milk, Old Huang also comes out of the house. He has lived with Changsheng all these years. To be exact, Changsheng has always lived with him, because this house is originally a cowsheed. After Lao Huang came out, he walked straight to the east wall of the yard, sniffed the plow head hanging on the wall, and then touched it with his head. There are not many beans, but half of them are ground up. I only have half a barrel of soybean milk. Raw soybean milk can't be used to drink cattle. It must be cooked, or the cattle will have gas after drinking it. As Changsheng ignited the fire and boiled, the sound of plowheads falling came from the yard. Hearing the sound, Changsheng looked out and saw that Old Huang had knocked the plow off the wall. It's not yet January yet. When it's not time to plow, what are you doing with it? Come back quickly. Changsheng said and summoned. Upon hearing the call of immortality, Old Huang turned his head and let out a soft low moo. Seeing that Lao Huang did not enter the house, Changsheng did not summon it again. The morning air was very fresh, and Lao Huang lay inside for several days, taking some fresh air. After a while, the pot began to warm up, presumably smelling the aroma of soybean milk. The little girl next door ran over and stood at the door looking in. The girl's name was Er Niur, but she was only six or seven years old. She was his neighbor and one of the few people in the village who was friendly and close to him. When she saw Er Niur, she waved him in for a long time and filled a bowl of soybean milk with her. Changsheng, did you see that red-eyed monster last night? Er Nyo held the pottery bowl. Where did that monster come from? Changsheng smiled. I really saw it, both eyes were red and bright. Er Nyo's expression was tense, with lingering palpitations in her heart. Changsheng smiled and dismissed it. After she finished drinking, he served her another bowl. It smells good, elder brother Changsheng, what day is it today? How can you cook soybean milk? Er Nyo looked up and asked. Before Changsheng could answer, a woman's voice came from the west courtyard. Hearing her mother's voice, Er Nyo drank the soybean milk in the bowl, put down the pottery bowl and hurried away. When Er Nyo left, Chang Sheng took the bucket, scooped the soybean milk in the pot, and carried it to Lao Huang. At this time, Old Huang was still standing under the east wall, and had been touching the plow head on the ground with his head. Chang Sheng brought soybean milk, but it didn't smell. At first Changsheng thought that soybean milk was too hot, but after waiting for a long time, soybean milk was completely cold. Huang still refused to drink it, but he was eager to touch the plow head with his head, eager to get the shaft down. Changsheng and Lao Huang have lived together for many years, day and night, and are familiar with their temperament. Lao Huang's behavior at this time is very abnormal. Although he plows the land every year and takes the initiative to pull the shaft, it is all in March during spring plowing, and it is not yet January, nor is it time to plow the land. One person and one cow remained deadlocked from the hour of Mao until the hour of Chen, but in the end, Changsheng compromised and reluctantly draped Lao Huang with a leash for plowing. Old Huang put on a lasso and walked out of the house slowly. He put on a sickle, carried a plow and followed with half a bucket of soybean milk. Lao Huang's abnormal behavior made him very worried. If Lao Huang's condition really improved, it was impossible for him to not eat. There is only one reasonable explanation for Lao Huang's current behavior, which is the legendary resurgence. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Reflection You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Reflection The fields that can be cultivated in the village are all behind the village. Not only the old horses know the way, but also the old cows know the way. Old Huang walked straight to the back of the village, carrying his hands and following him. 
Thinking that old Huang's performance at this time was likely to be a comeback, his heart was filled with mixed feelings, and he was heartbroken. At the end of the field, old Huang stood up and looked back, waiting for Changsheng to plow continuously. Old Huang has not been fed with water and grass for many days, and Changsheng is unwilling to let it do more work. He once again carried the bucket to let it drink some soybean milk, but old Huang only smelt it, not drank it. Changsheng had no choice but to put the wooden bucket aside and pick up a stone to gently tap Lao Huang's ox horn, but this beating was of no effect, and Lao Huang did not ruminate. Seeing Changsheng never repeatedly plow, old Huang let out a deep moo again, with a strong urge. After hesitating for a long time, Changsheng ultimately chose to respect Lao Huang. It is almost at the end of its life, don't go against it anymore, let it do what it wants to do. Lian Sua plows, Lao Huang bears the weight in front, and Changsheng supports the plow in the back. Changsheng felt very uncomfortable in his heart. Old Huang had worked hard all his life, and now his life is not long. He really shouldn't let him work anymore, but this is his own choice. He may not want to leave any regrets and wants to plow the land for his master again while he still has the strength. In order to save Lao Huang some effort, Changsheng pressed the plow very shallow. His field was not much, only less than two acres. He only hoped to finish plowing as soon as possible and take Lao Huang home. Compared to previous years, Lao Huang's walking speed has significantly increased at this time, which once again confirms Changsheng's speculation that Lao Huang is indeed in the stage of rejuvenation. Feeling uncomfortable in his heart, Changsheng had to widen the distance between the plows and try to make old Huang walk back and forth as little as possible. In this way, he finally finished plowing his two acres of land before noon. Just as Changsheng untied the rope and prepared to take old Huang home, he found that old Huang had walked straight towards the nearby field. This field belonged to someone else, but there was only old Huang in the village. When Wang Matsi was alive, he was plowing all the fields in the village. Over the years, old Huang had developed a habit. Seeing this situation, Changsheng felt even more uncomfortable. With over a hundred acres of farmland, old Huang could not finish plowing it no matter what, and he couldn't bear to let old Huang work hard and suffer any more. Feeling sad in his heart, he pulled the reins vigorously and tried to drag it back, but old Huang remained standing still. He was worried about hurting old Huang and didn't want to exert too much force. Helpless, he had to pull the plow again and follow old Huang to continue plowing. In the afternoon, Lao Huang's walking speed began to slow down. Changsheng noticed it and tried to pull it back again, but Lao Huang was exceptionally stubborn. After a brief stalemate, Changsheng had to wipe away his tears and return to the back to continue helping the plow. After the shinshir, old Huang began to tremble. This time, Changsheng did not try to stop it anymore. Old Huang could no longer hold on and could collapse at any time. To his surprise, after returning to the ground, old Huang took the initiative to stop and lowered his head to make a move to unload the shaft. Seeing this, Changsheng hurriedly unloaded the lasso from it and carried the bucket containing soybean milk again. Finally, Old Huang opened his mouth and took a few sips, then extended his tongue to lick Changsheng's head and face. Changsheng felt uncomfortable in his heart, raised his hand to wipe his tears, and waited until he looked up, only to find that Old Huang had already turned around and walked towards the back mountain. Where are you going? Changsheng quickly followed. Lao Huang didn't react, just slowly moving forward. Changsheng pulled the reins, but Lao Huang didn't stop and continued to move forward. Changsheng was not willing to tug hard, so he had to carry a wooden bucket and follow it towards the back mountain. He didn't know what it would be like for cows and horses to end their lives, but he knew that cats and dogs would leave home before they died, searching for a quiet place to die without anyone. Presumably, Old Huang was in the same situation. At the junction of the fields and mountains, there is a sunny grassy field. When Lao Huang walked there, he crouched down. This place is very sheltered from the wind, and there is thick hay below. Lao Huang lay quietly on his stomach, 
while Changsheng sat beside him, caressing it with his hands. The sun is setting in the west, and dusk is approaching. At first, Old Huang would occasionally lift his head and lick Changsheng's hands, but later on, he lost even the strength to lift his head and his breathing became slower and heavier. Just as Changsheng was grieving and grieving, a shout came from not far away, Changsheng, what are you doing here? Changsheng looked up at the sound and saw a middle dot aged villager returning from chopping firewood, carrying a bundle of firewood behind him. It's okay, just finished farming, take a break. Changsheng forced himself and said perfunctorily. Why don't you go home and rest, come here, the villager asked. Changsheng had no choice but to perfunctorily say, bring Lao Huang to eat grass. The villagers didn't say anything more and walked not far away carrying firewood, heading towards the village. Not far away, the villager stopped again and said, By the way, I heard from the big swallow that your cow is almost dead, isn't it true? Changsheng was in a bad mood and didn't want to speak, but he had to say, I'll plow your fields this afternoon for the absence of any shadows. No, the villager walked back carrying firewood. I think it really doesn't work. Look, it's almost deflated. Changsheng glared at the villager in disgust but did not answer. The villagers approached and used branches to poke old Huang. Changsheng reached out and pulled the branch apart, what are you doing? To be honest with me, is it dead? the villager asked. Whether it's death or life, it's none of your business. This is my cow. Changsheng glared angrily at each other. Oh, you little cripple. What's wrong with you? The villager gritted his teeth and tilted his head. Changsheng tilted his head aside and ignored him. The villager didn't say anything more and angrily glanced at Changsheng before turning around and leaving. As night gradually fell, Changsheng kept caressing Lao Huang. He didn't know if touching Lao Huang would make it feel any better. He only knew that if he was about to die, he hoped to receive the touch and comfort of his loved ones. Not long after the villagers who were chopping firewood returned to the village, Changsheng noticed that there were many torches shining in the village. After leaving the village, he moved straight north, seemingly towards the grass where he and Lao Huang were located. Seeing a large number of torches coming from far to near, Changsheng felt a strong sense of ominei in his heart. As everyone approached, he found that in addition to torches, they also carried baskets, wooden barrels, wooden pots and other utensils. Walking ahead was the village chief Wang Kuangui, while standing next to him was the butcher Wang Dayo, who also carried bone-picking knives of various sizes with him. Seeing this situation, Changsheng felt a chill in his heart. This group of people clearly came towards Lao Huang. Everyone arrived one after another, holding torches and surrounding Changsheng and Lao Huang in the center. Murakami cleared his throat with a dry cough and said, Changsheng, how is Lao Huang? Changsheng is not a fool. Just by looking at the utensils carried by everyone, one can guess what they want to do, and inevitably feel angry. Old Huang is my cow, and how it does has nothing to do with you, he said, who said this is your cow, Murakami said with a stern expression. This scalper was bought by the whole village pooling money back then, but it was just taken care of by Wang Matsi. As soon as Murakami spoke this, Changsheng immediately knew that he wanted to deceive others. Uncle Wang once told me before his death that he bought this cow for two tails of silver. Do you have any evidence that you said you pooled money to buy it? What kind of evidence do we need? We can all testify, said Butcher Wang loudly. After Wang Butcher finished speaking, everyone immediately followed suit, only saying that they could testify. Changsheng looked at everyone one by one, and he never believed that the villagers were all simple and kind, but he never expected that everyone would turn black and white upside down and lie without conscience. Dead cripple, what are you looking at? Someone shouted loudly, Wang Matsi is my cousin. Even if this cow belongs to him, it won't be your turn to inherit it after he dies. What are you? Well said, as an outsider, I really consider myself a villager. Yes, haven't we had enough bad luck with him in these years? He's a damn thing. I see that cow still has breath. 
Hurry up and drag him away, take a knife and let him bleed. When he stops breathing, he won't be able to bleed anymore. The villagers trembled all over as they besieged Changshan, pointing to the fields to the south. Over the years, your fields have all been cultivated by him. Have you forgotten? He's almost dead and still hasn't forgotten to cultivate them for you. You actually want to kill him. Are you still human? We are all starving to death, why bother so much, said the man who had previously cut firewood. A beast, you really treat it like a human, said a woman. Get out of here, or I'll break your other leg too, Wang Butcher glared and threatened. Changsheng carried a sickle with him, and upon hearing the words of Butcher Wang, he pulled out the sickle from his waist. Whoever dares to kill my cow, I will fight with him, he said seeing Changsheng take out his sickle, everyone turned to village chief Wang Quangui, who seemed to feel his authority being provoked and offended. His nose twitched and his face turned pale. He rushed to the left and right and said in a deep voice, Take him down. Several strong men heard the words of the village chief and each held torches to surround the farm tools. Seeing this situation, Changsheng became angry and ruthless, waving his sickle in an attempt to stop everyone. Among the crowd, one holding a shoulder pole struck Changsheng with it. Changsheng suffered from the pain and was furious. He rushed forward and swung his sickle, injuring a villager's thigh. At the same time, the sickle in his hand was also knocked off by the villager. The crowd rushed forward and surrounded him, punching and kicking. Changsheng was powerless to resist and difficult to stand up, afraid that someone would take the opportunity to harm Lao Huang. He had to shout loudly, only stating that the Tang dynasty strictly prohibited the slaughter of oxen. If everyone killed Lao Huang this time, he would have to report to the county government. A villager was injured, and everyone was already angry. This time, they heard that he was going to report, and became even more angry. The attack was even heavier, and they wished they could kill him. At this moment, old Huang, who was originally on the brink of death, suddenly opened his eyes and saw everyone beating Changsheng. He was concerned and anxious, and exerted his strength out of thin air. He stood up with a low cry and charged towards the crowd with a roar. No one would have thought that old Huang still had strength, without any defense, and in an instant, several people had been knocked down by it. Old Huang had already run out of oil and ran out of lights, and this collision directly exhausted his last vitality. After dispersing the crowd, his body shook and he fell with a loud crash. After a brief moment of astonishment, everyone came to their senses, wielding their knives and belongings, shouting and rushing towards old Huang. The sickle of immortality had been lost and could no longer stop the crowd. In desperation, he had to pounce on old Huang in an attempt to block everyone's attack. Everyone rushed forward in unison, smashing and beating wildly. Changsheng suffered consecutive heavy blows on his head, and just as he was secretly thinking that his life was resting, a jar roar suddenly came from the forest in the north, stop. End of this chapter Chapter 3 One Teacher and Four Apprentices You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 4 Leaving Hometown You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Leaving Hometown Not long after, the three of them returned to Changsheng's residence. After entering the room, the big Han and the woman vaguely understood why Changsheng was so sad. One person and one cow actually lived in the same room, which shows their deep affection. Changsheng only had one set of bedding. After entering the room, he rolled it up together with the mat. Seeing Changsheng packing up his clothes for washing, the big man spoke up and asked, Are you leaving here? Changsheng nodded. Don't try to come with us, you're a cripple. Master won't want you, said the big man. Changsheng nodded and said, I know, I won't implicate you. I just want to leave here. Pack up your things, and the eldest comes out to dismantle the door panels. It is not uncommon for poor people to use door panels for burial, as they cannot afford coffins during funerals and funerals. The big man saw the situation and reached out to help. 
He was tall and powerful, with two door panels weighing fifty or sixty pounds. He held them in his hand as if he had nothing. The three of them were packing up and preparing to leave when a little girl suddenly ran in. It was Ernio, the child of the neighbor next door. Ernio held a steamed bun in her hand and said it was secretly hidden during the day, ready to give it to him to eat. However, he did not return all day. The actions of the villagers made Changsheng feel disheartened and disheartened. The steamed bun handed over by Er Nyo made him feel the long-lost sincerity. There is still someone in this village who has good intentions towards him. He didn't want Er Nyo's nest, but he stuffed his few copper coins into her hand. This village is his sad place, and he won't come back. After returning to the village in Sukwang, the big man and Changsheng began to break through the soil and dig pits. Changsheng had not yet reached the water and rice for a day, and had little strength. However, the big man's strength was astonishing, as he had already dug three feet in less than half a pillar of incense. Seeing Changsheng sweating profusely, the short and chubby young man stepped forward to replace him. Changsheng thanked and declined, and the short and chubby man inexplicably grabbed his head and pushed him out of the pit. As Changsheng raised her hand to wipe sweat, the young woman handed over a water bag from the side. Changsheng declined politely and went aside to drink the soybean milk that he brought in the day. Hey, little cripple, what are you drinking? said the big man. Soybean milk. Changsheng replied. Give me a drink, said the big man. Old soybean milk Huang had a few drinks before he died, said Changsheng. It's okay. I don't hate it. The big man put down his shovel and waved to Changsheng. Come on, carry it for me. Long Life carried the bucket to the old man, who took the bucket and swallowed the cow. In a short time, half of the bucket of soybean milk was drunk by him. Seeing the Changsheng beside him dumbfounded, the big man sneered, there is something that can be eaten but not dried, but there is nothing that can be done but not eaten. I am naturally a big eater. Changsheng was grateful for his help in digging a pit, so he endured his sadness and tried to squeeze out a smile in response. The big man and the short and chubby man dug up the soil and rock very quickly. After a brief gasp, Changsheng returned to old Huang's side and used a brush to help him comb his hair, leaving him with his final dignity. The pit for burying cattle is not easy to dig. It is much larger than the pit for burying people. The big man did not drink the long dot lived soybean milk for free. He helped him dig the pit wide and deep to a certain depth. The short fat man took out his measuring stick and measured it. The only way to dig it was four feet seven. Seeing Changsheng's puzzled expression, the young woman explained from the side, without a son, three feet nine, one sun, four feet two, and many sons, four feet seven. Second senior brother, this is building a tomb for it according to the regulations of the deceased. Upon hearing the young woman's words, Chang Sheng was grateful and once again bowed and thanked the two in the pit. Old Huang was able to keep the entire body, and he was able to save his life. Fortunately, this master and disciple were together. In order to remember everyone, Changsheng asked the woman for their names and origins. The young woman also did not shy away from concealing, and truthfully told her that the white-haired Taoist was their master, with a common surname of Lin and a Taoist name of Luo Yangzi. The burly man's name is Bachelu, and he is his senior brother. The short and chubby man who is digging a pit with Baturu is his second senior brother Li Zhongyong. The third senior brother Chen Lichio went to the village with his master. Young woman ranked fourth, with the surname Tian and the name Zhengong. Baturu, who was digging a pit, heard the conversation between the two and added in a muffled voice from the pit, I am from the Tiela tribe in the northern desert. Many people there are called Baturu, and in our language, Baturu means hero. You Taoist priests lend a helping hand with righteousness. Before Changsheng could finish speaking, Baturu interrupted him, Don't call us Taoists. Although we learn to make a living from our master, we are not Taoists. Although Changsheng was not sure why, he did not inquire about the reason. 
he changed his name to Hero and thanked them again. He secretly recorded the names of the five people in his heart, and then asked about their ancestral origins. Although he had not traveled far, he could tell that their accents were different. The fact also confirmed his speculation that Master Lin Dao left Gazaishan, Master Brother Bachelu came from Northern Desert, Second Senior Brother Li Zhongyong was from Hejian, Third Senior Brother Chen Liqiu had ancestral roots in Jiangnan, and the only woman, Tian Zhengong, came from the jurisdiction of the Anong Protectorate. As he spoke, the pit was dug, and Changsheng laid the prepared wooden board underneath it. Baturu once again showed his extraordinary strength, picking up old Huang alone and putting him into the pit. Changsheng entered the pit again and covered Lao Huang with a bamboo mat. Lao Huang was quite large and the mat could not be completely covered. Changsheng then covered his own bedding on top of it, and as he covered Lao Huang's head and face, Changsheng shed tears again. This was his last look at Lao Huang. Just as Changsheng was grieving and grieving, Lin Daochang and Chen Liqiu, with white hair all over their heads, returned. Seeing Changsheng reluctant to cover Lao Huang's head and face, Lin Daochang sighed deeply and drew the long sword worn by Li Zhongyong to jump into the pit, wielding it to cut off one of Lao Huang's horns. Lao Huang is a cow with a small horn. Lin Daochang handed the chopped horn to Changsheng and said, Keep it as a memory. If it has a spirit, it will also be willing to leave the horn with you as a companion. Changsheng took the ox horn in his hand, and his heart was no longer as empty as before. After sighing, he covered old Huang's head and face. Seeing Lin Daochang and Changsheng emerge, Bachelor picked up a shovel to cover the round grave with soil. Just as he shoveled a few shovels, Changsheng jumped down again, lifted the mat, and placed a bamboo flute next to Lao Huang. When Changsheng climbed out of the pit, Lin Daochang casually asked, Can you play the flute? Changsheng Muran nodded. May it become a melody. Lin Daochang asked again. Changsheng didn't understand why Lin Daochang had this question, and at this moment, he felt very uncomfortable in his heart, so he didn't answer. Tian Jingong, who was very intelligent on the side, quickly said to Taoist Lin, Master, although his legs are not very convenient, he can still walk normally. Now that he is homeless, why not let him follow us? Lin Daochang tilted his head and glanced at Tian Zhengong without expressing his opinion. Baturu, who was shoveling soil, also helped to plead, Old C is right. I think this little cripple is quite good. You see, he is so good at dealing with cows and people. If you are paralyzed in bed one day, he will definitely be able to take good care of you. Lin Daochang couldn't help but cry and laugh, without making a decision. The boss is right, Chen Liqiu said in agreement. Master, this young brother values emotions and righteousness, and is not afraid in times of danger. He is willing to sacrifice his life to prevent the villagers from sharing the yellow cattle. Now he can no longer live here, and there will be many difficulties in making a living in the chaotic world. Please be kind and accept him. Seeing all three of them pleading for mercy, Li Zhongyong, the second senior brother, also spoke up, Master, to be a Taoist priest requires a flute player. It's rare to encounter someone who can play the flute. You often say that meeting each other is fate, so let's accept him. After a few people finished speaking, Lin Daochang smiled and said, they didn't speak up, so you should start by pleading. Do you know if they are willing? Tian Jingong knew Changsheng's name, and upon hearing Lin Daochang's words, he spoke up and asked, Changsheng, are you willing to follow us? Changsheng had no such thoughts before, and upon hearing Tian Jingong's question, he did not immediately answer. After careful consideration, he shook his head and said, I understand your kindness, but I am a cripple. Following you will drag you down. You have offended all the people in the village. You can't live here anymore. Do you know how chaotic it is outside now? It's rare for someone like you to stutter like this, said Baturu, who was backfilling the soil, I can hunt and fish, but I can't starve to death, said Changsheng calmly. Chen Liqiu was quite appreciative of immortality and advised from the side, men have aspirations in all directions. 
you should not be alone in the wilderness when you are young. Follow your master to practice your skills, and you should also settle down in times of chaos. Changsheng gave Chen Liqiu a grateful glance but did not answer. Seeing Changsheng not expressing his opinion, Lin Dao Chang took out a small cloth bag from his sleeve and handed it over. This is the medicine fee I am asking Wang Village for on your behalf. Please keep it, it will definitely be needed in the future. Upon hearing Lin Dao Chang's words, Changsheng finally realized why Lin Dao Chang and Chen Liqiu had followed Wang Village back to the village earlier. It turned out that the two had gone to seek justice for him. Thank you, Taoist. I don't want this money, Changsheng shook his head and refused. At this point, Baturu had finished backfilling and put down his shovel. Lin Dao Chang stuffed the copper coins into Changsheng's hand and signaled everyone to leave. Changsheng, are you really unwilling to come with us? Tian Zhengong asked again. Changsheng shook his head. Well, everyone has their own aspirations. Don't advise him, Lin Dao Chang waved his hand and said, besides, what we're doing is not all fair and square. He's following us for unknown good or bad. Seeing that everyone was about to set off, Changsheng hurriedly handed the package of copper coins to Baturu. Although Baturu was fierce and evil, he was very simple and honest. He was not afraid of Baturu, so he handed the copper coins to him. What are you doing? Baturu frowned and asked. I will always remember your kindness in my heart, someday. Before Changsheng could finish speaking, Chen Liqiu interrupted him, don't say that's useless. If you really have the heart to repay kindness, wouldn't it be the most convenient for you to follow us? Otherwise, once we leave today, where will you find us? As Chen Liqiu spoke, Lin Dao Chang had already set off with everyone on the road. After Chen Liqiu finished speaking, he turned around and left. Changsheng stood still and watched as everyone gradually walked away, feeling very conflicted in his heart. After hesitating for a long time, I finally limped along and followed. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Crossing the Heavenly Thunder You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Crossing the Heavenly Thunder Upon careful consideration, what Chen Liqiu said is very reasonable. Since he is willing to repay his kindness, why wait until another day? If we say goodbye today, it may be a long way off. Seeing Changsheng following behind, Chen Liqiu immediately welcomed him back and said with a smile, Hey, have you changed your mind? Changsheng nodded. Let's go over and talk to our master, Chen Liqiu pulled him forward. Lin Dao Chang and others stopped and turned around, waiting for the two of them to follow. Changsheng walked up to Lin Dao Chang and lowered his head, saying, If it weren't for Dao Chang and a few heroes rescuing me before, I might have been killed by the villagers. Lao Huang also rarely died completely. He deserves to repay the kindness of others but I don't have any gold or silver money, so I can only follow everyone and see what I can do for you. If you want, I will follow. If you don't want, I will go elsewhere. After Changsheng finished speaking, Chen Liqiu and others were somewhat surprised. They thought Changsheng would plead with Lin Dao Chang to accept him as an apprentice, but they didn't expect him to say such words. However, Lin Dao Chang was very satisfied with Changsheng's words. After all, accepting an apprentice requires time to observe and understand. If they were to meet by chance and ask recklessly, it would be too abrupt. Ha, huh, let's go. Lin Dao Chang turned around and went ahead. Lin Dao Chang's words naturally agreed, and everyone took Changsheng along on the road. At this moment, it was almost five o'clock, and everyone did not search for the lodging. They hurried towards the east in the dark. Although Changsheng is lame, it is not serious and can walk normally without burdening others. Everyone has a good impression of Changsheng. Firstly, they admire him for his loyalty and righteousness. In order to protect a dying plowing ox, a young man dared to fight against dozens of villagers, sacrificing his life to protect him and refusing to retreat. How brave he is! Furthermore, having sympathy for him, 
being alone and without support, is enough, as his legs and feet are not yet convenient. Among the few people, Chen Liqiu was the most talkative. He didn't know that during the time when he and Lin Daocheng entered the village, Bachelu and Tian Zhengong had already introduced everyone to Changsheng. This time, he gave a detailed introduction again. The eldest Bachelu is 25 years old and has been with his master for nine years. The second son, Li Zhongyong, was 19 years old and had been with his master for four years. He was 18 and followed his master for three years. Lao Shi Tian Zhengong is 16 years old and was taken in by his master last year. Except for the eldest Baturu, all three of them have family members. As Chen Liqiu was speaking, Lin Dao Chang, who was walking ahead, suddenly stopped. Everyone followed his gaze and looked north, only to see a collapsed jujube tree not far north, with a pitch black body that seemed to have been burned by fire. Master, is it lightning striking the wood? Li Zhongyong was quite excited. It should be. Lin Daocheng strode over. The crowd followed behind him and approached the collapsed jujube tree, which was a mountain jujube tree with a bull mouth thickness. The fracture was located at the lower part of the tree body, and the trunk was pitch black but the branches and leaves were still green. Just as everyone was looking at the jujube tree, Baturu suddenly pointed northwest and said, Master, it seems there's also one there. Listening to Bachelu's words, everyone indeed discovered an elm tree that had been struck by lightning more than ten zhang away on the west side. After carefully examining the two trees that had been struck by lightning, Lin Daochang's face showed confusion and he frowned and shook his head, it's not right. What's wrong, Master? Baturu asked. Lin Daochang replied, these two trees were both struck by lightning not long ago. Thunder would never fall in such close proximity on an ordinary rainy day. What do you mean? asked Li Zhongyong. Lin Daochang did not answer Li Zhongyong's question, but said to the crowd, carefully search this area and see if there are any abnormalities. Upon hearing Lin Daochang's words, everyone immediately began to search separately. Only Changsheng remained in place, and he did not participate in the search for two reasons. Firstly, he did not know what to look for, and secondly, he was very familiar with this area, which was the mountain where he lived last night. This mountain is not big, and soon everyone searched the mountain and found the cave on the mountainside. However, the cave was very small, and everyone only looked outside. The search results made Lin Daochang even more puzzled, leaving everyone to cut off lightning and strike jujube trees, and examine the terrain from a higher altitude. Thunderbolt wood is a top-dot quality tool for Taoist practitioners, especially for lightning-struck jujube wood, which is the most young object. After being struck by lightning, there is residual thunder power in it, which is best used to counter in objects. While chopping down lightning-struck trees, Li Zhongyong and others were also chatting casually. From their conversation, Changsheng learned two important information. First, although the few followed Lin Daochang, Lin Daochang did not teach him martial arts and magic. The second reason why they are puzzled is that in addition to these two trees that were recently struck by lightning, there are also some old trees that have collapsed and were struck by lightning, indicating that there have been multiple instances of transitional lightning strikes here. Brotherly, what is crossing the heavenly thunder? Dot. Changsheng asked in a low voice. We are all our own people, don't look out on others. In the future, just call me second brother, Li Zhongyong corrected Changsheng's title with a smile and then spoke out to explain. If we want to talk about crossing the heavenly thunder, we need to start with different types of cultivation. The seven orifices of different types are incomplete, and cultivation is not allowed by the heavenly way. Therefore, Different types of cultivation need to go through multiple disasters, one small disaster every hundred years, and one major disaster every thousand years. Every disaster will trigger the crossing of the heavenly thunder. If there is fate, avoiding the heavenly thunder will make the path more profound. If luck is low, not avoiding the heavenly thunder, one will be struck by the heavenly thunder. The ashes fly and the smoke extinguishes. Do you mean there are monsters in this mountain? 
Changsheng nervously asked. Li Zhongyong shook his head and said, if there really are exotic beings with profound Taoist practices here, it makes sense. The key is that this mountain peak does not hide wind or gather energy, the vegetation is not strong, and there is no clean water source. It is not suitable for exotic beings to hibernate and practice. After Li Zhongyong finished speaking, Chen Liqiu interjected, in addition to the trees that were knocked down by lightning, we have also found multiple lightning strike marks in the mountains. Based on the direction of this mountain peak, it is not a place with many thunderstorms, and it should not have caused so many thunderstorms to fall here. The only possibility is that there was an alien species crossing the disaster here. However, this statement does not make sense. Firstly, this place is too close to the village, noisy and not suitable for alien species to hibernate and thrive. Secondly, alien species crossing the disaster often occurs once a thousand years, or as little as once a hundred years. However, upon closer inspection of the dead trees that were knocked down by lightning in the mountains, they do not occur in a hundred years. Before the new year, it has been concentrated in the past few years, what do you mean? Changsheng asked cautiously. What I mean is that this matter doesn't make sense, no matter what, it doesn't make sense, Chen Liqiu pouted. By the way, you live near here. Do you know if something strange has happened here? Changsheng shook his head. Chen Liqiu and others were unaware, but he was well aware that the frequent occurrence of thunder here was caused by him. However, he dared not tell Chen Liqiu and others this. It's rare to encounter someone who understands, and Changsheng naturally won't miss the opportunity. He spoke up and asked, Third brother, can the thunder of crossing the calamity only strike monsters? Can it strike people? No, Chen Liqiu shook his head. Unless it is a person who has become an alien or a person who practices qi at the pinnacle of cultivation, only when they reach the level of purple qi cultivation can they trigger thunder. Changsheng originally wanted to ask himself if he was human, but this thought only flashed through his mind. He knew he was human, and even if he didn't believe in himself, he believed in Lin Dao Chang and others. If he were really some kind of monster, they wouldn't be able to see it. I wanted to ask if there was anything dirty on my body that would be struck by lightning, but this absurd idea only flashed by in a flash. Lin Dao Chang is a Taoist, and if there is really something dirty on my body, he will definitely be able to see it. Everyone cut down the jujube tree that had been struck by lightning, tidied it up, and it was already dawn. Lin Dao Chang also rushed back, with a puzzled expression on his face. It goes without saying that he did not find the reason why there were frequent occurrences of cross-disaster thunder in this area. Everyone packed their things and continued eastward. Along the way, Lin Dao Chang, Li Zhongyong, and others had been discussing this matter. After previous observations, the possibility of alien habitats in this area had been ruled out. However, the frequent occurrence of crossing tribulations and thunder in this area was a fact. Therefore, there is only one reasonable explanation, which is that alien creatures who originally lived in other places came here to cross tribulations. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Three Teachings and Techniques You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 Three Teachings and Techniques Lin Dao Chang and others were just chatting casually, but Changsheng, who was walking behind, was shocked to hear it. He knew it was related to himself, but he didn't understand the reason behind it. Fortunately, not long after, everyone walked onto the official road leading to the county town. After entering the official road, there were many pedestrians on the road, and everyone no longer spoke private words. Li Zhongyong seemed to casually chat with Changsheng about daily life. The reason why he said it seemed casual was because Li Zhongyong's questions were very targeted, and the purpose was to find out more about him. Before this, Changsheng rarely traveled far, and the last time he entered the city was three years ago. His biggest feeling when he went out this time was that the lives of the villagers were even more difficult than before. Most of the pedestrians on the road were dressed in rags, and the vendors and vendors who used to walk around were also rarely seen now. Knowing that immortality is rare in the world, 
Li Zhongyong briefly told him about current affairs. The reigning emperor at this time was Li Bian, the younger brother of Emperor Shizong, who was in his twenties and very young. Although the Huangchao Rebellion has been quelled by the court, the rebellion that lasted for six or seven years has affected more than half of the territory of the Tang Dynasty. In order to quell the war, the Tang Dynasty has almost exhausted its national and military strength, resulting in a weakening of its control over local governors. The direct consequence is the division of feudal domains, each acting independently, and frequent wars throughout the country. In addition, there are eunuchs wielding power within the court, causing internal and external troubles, making things worse. The Tang Dynasty, which once dominated the East and came from all over the world, is no longer in its former glory, like a candle in the wind, on the brink of danger. Li Zhongyong said that he would listen as long as he lived. He didn't say anything, nor did he ask. For him, the things Li Zhongyong said were very distant and unrelated to him. Upon discovering that Changsheng was not interested in political and current affairs, Li Zhongyong changed the topic and talked about the martial arts world. This topic aroused Changsheng's curiosity and he listened carefully, asking questions from time to time. Most of the time, it was Li Zhongyong who spoke, and Chen Liqiu occasionally said a few words. According to the two of them, there are various gangs in the Tang dynasty today, even if there are not a thousand, there are eight hundred. Most of them are green forest gangs formed in recent years, and these people rob homes and cannot be considered true members of the martial arts world. There are about two to three hundred sects with a long history and inherited skills. According to the martial arts skills they have practiced, these sects can be divided into three categories. The first category is the earliest and most widely spread Confucian sect, which is characterized by its vastness and versatility. The second type is Buddhist sects, where Buddhist practices are derived from the Buddhist teachings of the Western regions. They follow the path of pure yang and righteousness, with strong and powerful power dominating the path. Among them, high monks who understand the true essence of Buddhism can also use their magical powers. The third type is Taoist sects, where many practitioners of Taoist techniques are Taoists. Due to the fact that Taoists are involved in comprehending the yin yang heavenly Tao, the characteristics of their techniques are mainly characterized by impermanence, which is infinite in three or three, and infinite in six or six. Among them, Taoists who formally teach Taoist scriptures can also draw talismans and pray to the heavens. As they spoke, everyone arrived at the county seat of Moping. Dengzhou Prefecture was the easternmost prefecture in the Tang Dynasty, and further east was an endless sea. Within the jurisdiction of Dengzhou Prefecture, there were three county seats. Huang County, Moping, and Wendang. After entering the city, everyone found a small inn to settle in. It was only managed by a couple. During the meal, each person ordered a bowl of noodles, and the portion from Bachelu required five bowls. The woman strongly recommended it when she saw that everyone was dressed neatly and not like a poor person. She only said that a rooster had just been slaughtered this morning and had already been stewed. If they were willing, they could serve it immediately. Lin Dao Chang inquired about the price and learned that a chicken needed ten won copper coins, so he waved his hand and declined. Changsheng carried a bag of copper coins on his body, which were the soup and medicine fees that Lin Dao Chang and Chen Liqiu helped him collect from Wang Tsuanjing last night. He didn't know the exact amount of that bag of copper coins, but estimated it to be 101. With the intention of entertaining and thanking everyone, he stopped the woman and asked her to bring the stewed rooster. Li Zhongyong and others were unaware, so they all turned their heads to look at him. Under the gaze of everyone, Changsheng felt a bit awkward and blushed as he said, if it weren't for the help of Taoist Lin and everyone last night, I'm afraid my life would have been in danger. Old Huang would have been eaten by them. Moreover, all the copper coins on my body were collected by Taoist Lin for me. I should repay my kindness and thank you. Let me take care of this meal. Upon hearing his words, everyone was somewhat surprised. They didn't expect a young man who had never left the house to be so polite. However, with the presence of Taoist Lin, 
they couldn't make a decision. So they looked at Taoist Lin and waited for him to speak. Lin Dao Chang glanced at Changsheng and nodded with a smile. Seeing that Lin Dao Chang agreed, Changsheng asked the woman about the price of the liquor and learned that one pound of liquor cost five won. He then asked the woman to add two pounds. The woman happily agreed and turned away. Seeing Changsheng being so generous, Li Zhongyong guessed that he didn't go out much and might not know the current prices. He casually explained to him that the main currency used at this time was copper coins, silver was rare, and gold was extremely rare. One or two silver coins were exchanged for 1,000 copper coins. In earlier years, when the country was strong and the people were wealthy, five copper coins could buy one dough of rice, which was about 12 pounds. Nowadays, the national strength of the Tang dynasty is declining, and it takes 10 copper coins to buy one bushel of rice. In other words, one copper coin can buy one kilogram of rice. Changsheng bought a chicken with 10 won, which was originally enough to buy 10 kilograms of rice. In addition, Xiaojiu Changsheng is also expensive to buy. At this time, one kilogram of grain for brewing produces four tails of wine, and three kilograms of grain can produce one kilogram and two tails of wine. However, the woman sold him five won per kilogram, which was clearly expensive. Listening to Li Zhongyong's words, Changsheng had a clear idea, but he didn't feel sorry for spending a few extra copper coins. People should not forget the kindness of others just because the crisis has passed. If it weren't for the help of Lin Dao Chang and others last night, the villagers wouldn't have killed him and would have slaughtered and eaten Lao Huang in front of him. If that scene really happened, it would have become his eternal haze and nightmare. Not long after, the drinks and food were served, and everyone began to eat. Living in the countryside, he rarely has meat and fish, and Changsheng also wants to eat meat very much. However, he never went to pick it up, just lowered his head to eat noodles, occasionally stood up to pour wine for Lin Dao Chang and others, and took the opportunity to thank everyone one by one. In fact, everyone did not take last night's incident to heart, but seeing Changsheng so solemnly grateful, their impression of him became even better. Seeing that Changsheng never touched the chicken from beginning to end, Everyone took advantage of his standing up to pour wine, and each person picked up a chopstick for him. When he put down the wine pot and sat down, the bowl was already filled with chicken. Seeing everyone showing such concern for themselves, Changsheng's heart warmed greatly, and the idea of learning from others to make a living increased a bit. Although he knew that Baturu could eat well, he never expected that Baturu could eat even more than he had imagined. The inn served noodles in a bowl from the sea, and a bowl of noodles for an ordinary person would definitely be enough. However, Baturu had eaten five bowls and was still unsatisfied. Seeing this situation, Changsheng asked the shopkeeper to serve five more bowls. Although Baturu declined, he only pretended to wait until the noodles were served, leaving nothing to eat. Eating meals for ten people alone is no longer astonishing, but rather terrifying as if it were a fake exchange. After the meal, Changsheng settled the bill and handed the remaining copper coins to Lin Daochang with both hands. However, Lin Daochang smiled and waved his hand, saying, you can keep it for yourself. Changsheng had the intention to follow Lin Daochang and others, but felt that it was inappropriate to keep money privately, so he delivered it again. When he guessed what Changsheng was thinking, Lin Daochang smiled and said, except for Baturu, each of them has some savings. You don't need to think too much, just keep it. Upon hearing Lin Daochang's words, Changsheng finally put away the cloth bag containing the money and followed everyone to move into the backyard. Lin Daochang asked for a total of six guest rooms. Changsheng had never stayed in an inn before, and he didn't know how big a room was. After opening the door, he realized that the room was very spacious and had two beds inside, which could accommodate two people. Just as Changsheng was standing at the door looking inside, Chen Lichio patted his shoulder from behind and said, You didn't sleep all night last night, you should sleep well. I'm not tired, Changsheng shook his head and turned to ask, Third brother, it's not yet time, it's still early dark. What are you doing? Master wants to go out with the boss to do something, 
so we'll stay at the inn and rest, Chen Lichio said casually. Can I help you? Changsheng asked. Honestly resting in the room, there are many things you don't know. The day will be long, let me tell you slowly in the future. Chen Lichio yawned and walked into the next room. Watching Chen Lichio enter the room, Changsheng finally entered his own room. Chen Lichio only knew one thing and didn't know the other. In fact, he not only didn't sleep last night, but also the night before yesterday. However, when faced with a huge change, his heart was very chaotic. Although he was very tired, he had no sleep. After examining the room's furnishings, he put down his bag, lay in bed with clothes, and was lost in thought. At this moment, his mood was very complicated. He met by chance and did not know much about Lin Dao Chang and others. He only knew that a few people were not bad people, but he did not know what Lin Dao Chang and others did. He followed them like this and did not know what he would experience next. However, compared to his worries about the unknown future, the inexplicable emptiness was even more unbearable for him. For so many years, he had been with Lao Huang every day, and suddenly Lao Huang was gone, leaving his heart empty. Thinking of Lao Huang, I recalled last night's incident again. If Lin Dao Chang and others hadn't appeared, Lao Huang would have been stripped and eaten by the villagers. It was precisely because of Lin Dao Chang and others that Lao Huang was able to end his life peacefully and leave his entire body. With this incident, he should have followed Lin Dao Chang and others because he owed them something, no matter what was waiting for him, he recognized it. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Ancient Books in Tombs You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Ancient Books in Tombs I was lost in thought when I suddenly heard Lin Dao Chang and Bachelor talking, their voices coming from the street outside the house. Upon hearing the voices of the two, Changsheng quickly got out of bed, opened the door, and walked a few steps to follow them on the street. Lin Dao Chang, I heard from third brother that you are going out to do something. Can I help you with anything? Lin Dao Chang smiled and said, We appreciate your kindness. Let's go back and rest. Seeing what Changsheng wanted to say, Baturu beside him spoke out, If you know what we're going to do, you want to go with us. Hurry back and don't cause any trouble. Upon hearing Baturu's words, Changsheng knew he couldn't really help, so he could only stop and watch as the two of them headed north. As the two of them walked away and were about to turn back, they suddenly saw a villager selling red fruits not far away. They walked over and bought some, then carried them back with their clothes. Returning to the yard, he asked the shopkeeper for several pottery bowls, washed the red fruits, and knocked on the door of the second son Li Zhongyong. Li Zhongyong opened the door and let Changsheng in, fiddling with something at the table while talking to Changsheng. On the table in the center of the room was a pile of strange things, made of different materials. Some were carved from wood, some seemed to be cast from metal, and in addition, there were some bottles and jars. The room was filled with a strong smell of saltpeter and sulfur. Second brother, what are you doing? Changsheng asked curiously. I'm pondering Mozi, Li Zhongyong replied casually. Changsheng didn't quite understand Li Zhongyong's meaning, and saw that he was busy and didn't have the heart to talk to him. He wisely withdrew and went back to the house to bring a pottery bowl filled with red fruits to knock on the door of the third son Chen Lichio. Chen Lichio opened the door, holding a brush in his hand. It is impolite for someone to come and deliver things without letting anyone enter, let alone Chen Lichio, who likes Changsheng very much, warmly welcomed him in and casually took a red fruit to sit at the table, chewing it while writing with a pen. Third brother, you're busy, I won't disturb you anymore. Changsheng wanted to leave. It's okay, sit down for a while, Chen Lichio pleaded. Upon hearing Chen Lichio's words, Changsheng didn't rush to leave. Seeing a stool by the door, he bent down to take it and sat down by the door. Why are you sitting so far? Come and sit down like a frustrated little daughter. In law, Chen Lichio said. You are writing a letter, Changsheng said. I wrote mine, and you. Chen Lichio reflected at this point, oh, you kid can't read, 
can you? Hmm, I know a bit. Changsheng nodded. Rare, who taught you? Chen Liqiu asked casually. There used to be an old gentleman in the village, and during the idle farming season, I would go to his house to learn calligraphy, replied Changsheng. Chen Liqiu smiled and said, then you can sit by the door. You can't read what I wrote. Third brother, do you have a crush? Changsheng asked, and among the few, Chen Liqiu was the most easy dot going. He also liked Chen Liqiu very much. That's natural. I'm so handsome and charming, how could no one like me? Chen Liqiu was half joking. Changsheng smiled and stood up to say goodbye, third brother, you're busy. I'll go and send a few fruits to fourth sister. Chen Liqiu chewed on the red fruit and responded vaguely. Changsheng then knocked on the door of Lao Si Tian Jingong's room. There were differences between men and women. He didn't want to enter the room, but Tian Jingong only said that there was something to give him and insisted on letting him in. Like Chen Liqiu, Tian Jingong was originally writing something at the desk, but she wasn't writing letters. Instead, she was recording something in a thick notebook. As Tian Jingong untied her bundle, Changsheng accidentally glanced at the notebook and found that the text on it was very different from common Chinese characters. He didn't recognize more than half of the text. Before long, Tian Jingong turned around and held a flute in his hand. This is for you, he said Changsheng looked at Tian Jingong in confusion, then lowered his head to look at the flute. The flute was all green, with a restrained spiritual light, and it was actually a jade flute carved from a whole piece of green jade. He naturally couldn't take such rare and valuable items, and waved his hand repeatedly, firmly refusing them. Tian Jingong couldn't help but put the flute into Changsheng's hand and said, I'm not good at playing it, so it's useless to keep it. If you take it, it can be considered as making the most of everything. Seeing Changsheng's face showing fear and eager to return it, Tian Jingong quickly spoke up and said, This flute is not my old thing, but it was obtained midway. Your flute has been left in the old ox's grave, so I will give it to you. You will also need it to play Daoist music in the future. Before Changsheng could speak, Tian Jingong changed the topic and said, By the way, do you know the score? Changsheng shook his head. Can you memorize the five tones? Tian Jingong asked again. Changsheng nodded. Okay, let's practice it first. I'll pluck the strings first, and you'll imitate the playing, said Tian Jingong. After Tian Jingong finished speaking, without waiting for Changsheng to express his opinion, he walked to the bedside and took a black cloth wrapped musical instrument from the bed. Only when Tian Zhengong pulled off the black cloth did Changsheng realize that it was a five-stringed pipa. Tian Zhengong sat diagonally at the table with his pipa in his arms, reached out and flipped through the thick notebook. After a moment, he found a sheet of music from it, took a deep breath, and began to stroke it. After playing for a while, Tian Zhengong stopped and tilted his head to look at Changsheng, waiting for him to play and imitate. You finish playing first, I'll play again, Changsheng said. Have you played this piece before? Tian Zhengong was quite surprised. I haven't blown or heard it, Changsheng shook his head. Can you remember the entire song just by listening once? Tian Zhengong was half convinced. I don't know, let's give it a try, Changsheng sneered. Upon hearing his words, Tian Zhengong directly finished playing the piece. She played a song called Spring River Flower Moon Night, which was written in the early Tang Dynasty and is also the most famous representative work of the pipa instrument. When the lingering sound of the pipa dissipated, Changsheng began to play the horizontal flute. It was his first time playing the jade flute, but he didn't expect it to sound much better than the bamboo flute. The sound was too high, and he had no choice but to rise and walk high, flowing like clouds and water, all in one go. After Changsheng finished playing, Tian Zhengong frowned slightly. She frowned not because Changsheng played poorly, but because Changsheng played too well, comparable to a professional musician. She suspected that Changsheng had played this piece before. It's blowing well, let's play another song, 
said Tian Zhengong. Changsheng nodded. This time, Tian Zhengong did not look at the score again, but closed his eyes and pondered for a moment before directly starting to play. Although Changsheng did not understand the repertoire, he could hear that the piece played by Tian Zhengong was very sad, and the emotion of nostalgia was very strong. After playing the real bow, Nagashi began to imitate it again and learn the characteristics of the jade flute. His grasp was very precise, and he had not yet stepped out of the sadness of losing old Huang. Playing this piece of music made him quite uncomfortable. Fortunately, when it was halfway through, Chen Lichio couldn't bear it any more and shouted loudly from the next room, Hey hey hey, Lao Si, what are you doing? Can we have some celebration? Upon hearing Chen Lichio's shout, Changsheng stopped and Tian Jingong, who had been listening with closed eyes, opened his eyes. It's blowing very well, Tian Jingong sighed. Worried that the other person might suspect him of cheating, Changsheng explained in a low voice, I really haven't heard this song before. I know, Tian Jingong nodded slowly. This cherry blossom song from our hometown is from our place, you can't possibly have heard it. Changsheng didn't know how to answer the conversation, so he remained silent and stood aside. Tian Jingong seemed to have thought of something, his eyes blurred, and he didn't speak for a long time afterwards. Changsheng has the intention to leave, but he doesn't know how to deal with the flute in his hand. He has played this flute before, and returning it may not be good, but it seems inappropriate to just take away such a valuable thing. In the end, Tian Zhengong regained his senses and smiled at Changsheng, saying, I didn't expect you to have such a talent for melody. If you do something again in the future, there will be no one to play the flute. Changsheng felt a bit embarrassed and smiled awkwardly. Tian Zhengong said again, You go back and rest first. Take the flute, don't refuse again. Upon hearing Tian Zhengong's words, Changsheng could only express gratitude and accept it, then bid farewell and leave. Returning to the room, Changsheng lay in bed, unable to hold on anymore. A series of unexpected events left him physically and mentally exhausted, and he quickly fell asleep after closing his eyes. When I woke up, it was nightfall, not sleep, but was awakened by a loud noise that seemed like thunder, happening nearby, causing all the furnishings in the room to tremble and tremble. Just as Changsheng was eager to open the door and run out to investigate, he met Chen Lichio, who had also opened the door. Compared to his panic, Chen Lichio appeared much more calm, shaking his head and sighing, with a helpless expression on his face. Third brother, have you ever heard a strange noise? Changsheng asked. I'm not deaf, Chen Lichio said casually. What's going on? Changsheng asked. Before Chen Lichio could answer, Changsheng noticed smoke coming out of Li Zhongyong's room. No, there's a fire in my second brother's room, he said, what's wrong with losing fire? Chen Lichio stretched lazily. This is not the first time. Don't worry about him. Let's go out and take a walk. Changsheng was unaware of the reason and had the intention to go and investigate, but seeing Chen Lichio so calm and Li Zhongyong and Tian Zhengong living next door not opening the door, he knew that similar things might have happened multiple times before, and they seemed to have become accustomed to it. Following Chen Lichio to the street, I turned around and happened to see Li Zhongyong, who was opening a window for ventilation. Li Zhongyong was disheveled and had burnt marks on his eyebrows and hair. Realizing that Changsheng was looking at him, Li Zhongyong felt a bit embarrassed and smiled awkwardly at Changsheng before turning back from the window. Changsheng was puzzled in his heart, so he quickly took a few steps and followed Chen Lichio who was walking ahead. Third brother, what is second brother doing? I'm dying, Chen Lichio said casually. Long life is unknown, so I tilted my head to look at him. Chen Lichio had no choice but to say, hey, since he got a mosey book, he hasn't stopped. Whenever he has free time, he just messes around and has bombed it several times. This time, the noise is relatively small. Last time, he bombed his inn in Chizhou. After Chen Lichio finished speaking, he bought two pieces of rice cakes from the roadside, handed them to Changsheng, 
and then continued, You dare not live next to him until you see me. You should also stay away from him in the future. What is Mosey? Changsheng asked. An ancient book that records the creations of government agencies, Chen Liqiu replied. Seeing Changsheng's puzzled expression, Chen Liqiu casually said, You can't know that thing. It's an ancient book from the spring and autumn period. It was listed as a forbidden book in the Qin period and burned down. The bundle of bamboo slips he received is an unparalleled and unique edition. Where did he get it from, even though he was a lone parent? Changsheng asked. Where else can we come from? In the tomb, Chen Liqiu chewed on the rice cake. Master just didn't let us take the gold and silver from the tomb, but he never prohibited us from taking ancient books and collections. Chen Liqiu regained his composure at this point and turned his head to look at Changsheng. Seeing Changsheng's surprised expression, he awkwardly smiled and said, he he, I seem to have slipped my tongue. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Ultimate Divine Arts You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Ultimate Divine Arts Changsheng had always been puzzled by what Lin Daochang and his team were doing. Now he finally found out, and his surprise was inevitable. In his impression, those who dug graves were all bad people, while Lin Daochang and his team didn't look like bad people no matter what. In order to resolve Chen Liqiu's embarrassment of speaking up, Changsheng cleverly said, Actually, even if third brother didn't say it, I had already guessed. Oh, how did you guess? Chen Liqiu was quite surprised. My elder brother and second brother helped me dig a soil pit last night, and I watched from the side. It seems that they are very good at digging soil and holes, said Changsheng. Huh, you're very careful, Chen Liqiu smiled. Third brother, since it's not for gold and silver, why dig people's graves? Changsheng asked in a low voice. Since the words had already been spoken, Chen Liqiu didn't hide anymore. There weren't many pedestrians on the street at night, and he didn't deliberately avoid them. He casually said, look for something. Master has been looking for something. Don't ask me what he's looking for. It's not that I didn't tell you, but that we don't even know. Seeing Changsheng holding the rice cake all the time, Chen Liqiu urged, eat it quickly, this rice cake is quite delicious. After Changsheng nodded, he began to chew on rice cake, which was called rice cake by Chen Liqiu in different regions, while the locals called it rice cake. After eating rice cakes, Changsheng didn't ask about digging graves anymore. Instead, he changed the topic and said, Third brother, what kind of martial arts do masters know? I don't know, Chen Liqiu said while handing over a sugar cake. I don't know. Changsheng frowned in confusion. You think I'm lying to you, Chen Liqiu stuffed the sugar cake into Changsheng's hand. Master rarely uses martial arts and doesn't let us take action easily. Changsheng pinched the sugar cake, thanked him, and then asked, What are you learning from your master? Chen Liqiu chuckled and said proudly, Although master doesn't teach us martial arts, we all learn unparalleled martial arts. Changsheng was confused and puzzled. If you had a little brain, you wouldn't have asked her the martial arts we practice come from, Chen Liqiu said. Changsheng reacted and flexed his fingers to the ground. Chen Liqiu nodded with a wicked smile. Changsheng was curious and asked in a low voice, What martial arts have you all learned? Give me a reason to tell you. Chen Liqiu played tricks. Changsheng couldn't think of any benefits for Chen Liqiu, so he had to smile awkwardly. Chen Liqiu was just teasing him, not to mention that young people have a desire to show off. Seeing that Guan Zi was selling well, he spoke up and said, The boss is practicing the diamond immortal skill. This skill is the ancestor of horizontal martial arts, belonging to Buddhist martial arts. The golden bell cover and iron cloth shirt of Shaolin Temple are all derived from it. Is Shaolin Temple a monk's temple? Changsheng asked. Yes, Shaolin Temple is a temple built by Wei Emperor Tuoba Hong for the eminent monk Batua in the western regions. It is one of the three great ancestral halls of Buddhism, Chen Liqiu replied. 
Changxing originally wanted to ask where the other two ancestral halls of the Buddha sect were, but he was more eager to know what kind of martial arts the other few people practiced, so he held back and did not ask further. After answering Changxing's question, Chen Liqiu continued, the martial arts that second brother and I practice come from the Hunyuan divine skill. It is said that this Hunyuan divine skill was created by the Taoist immortal Guangqing Jinren. However, we do not have the same talent as Guangqing Jinren and cannot achieve both yin and yang. We can only each practice one. Second brother practices the red yang divine palm, while I practice the xian yin divine palm. What about fourth sister? What kind of martial arts does fourth sister practice? Changsheng asked again. Chen Liqiu smiled and asked, Why don't you ask how powerful the martial arts with such a powerful name are? Oh, how powerful are the Red Yang Divine Palm and the Xian Yin Divine Palm? Changsheng asked. Ha, ah, I don't know. There are nine levels of divine skill, and we haven't even mastered the first level, Chen Liqiu laughed. Changsheng smiled and then asked, Has Big Brother's Vitra not bad divine skill been practiced yet? It's done, Chen Liqiu nodded and said. When the boss was a child with a high fever, he didn't receive timely treatment, which led to his lack of mental agility. However, not having mental agility is not necessarily a bad thing. He doesn't have as many chaotic thoughts as we do. There are three levels of the Diamond Immortal skill, and he has already reached the first level. Oh, what kind of martial arts did Fourth Sister practice? Changsheng asked again. She only started practicing martial arts with her master last year, but her master gave her the Qimen Duanjia a while ago, and she seems to be promoting the study of the five elements done art, said Chen Liqiu. The five elements escaping technique. Is escaping technique a lightness skill? Changsheng is not sure why. Where are you going? Done doesn't necessarily mean running. Done in Qimen Duanjia refers to the changes of truth, falsehood, falsehood, and reality, Chen Liqiu said vaguely as he took a bite of the sugar cake. Ziyang Chuangmen Duanjia is a technique of heavenly secrets, covering everything. It is said that ancient Yellow Emperor, Shang and Zhou Jiang Shang, and Zhuge Kongming all studied it, and it is the origin of Confucian martial arts, which also has roots in Taoist martial arts. After Chen Liqiu finished speaking, he walked into a grain shop by the roadside and negotiated with the shop owner before buying half a bag of rice. The rice was not very heavy and was carried by Changsheng. After leaving the grain shop, Changsheng asked, Third brother, why buy so much grain? Nonsense, of course it's eating, Chen Liqiu said casually. We're afraid we can eat these grains for over a month, Changsheng said. A month. You forgot that we still have a big bucket, and these are only half a month's worth, Chen Liqiu said. In the next half month, won't we pass by villages and towns? Changsheng asked again. We may pass by, but unless it is necessary, we usually stay away from towns and villages, Chen Liqiu said. We rarely walk on the main road on weekdays, otherwise we wouldn't have met you last night. As the two spoke, Chen Liqiu walked into a pickled vegetable shop again, bought some pickled vegetables and braised food, and also asked the shop owner where the county post station was located. After leaving the door, Chen Liqiu rushed to Changsheng and said, You go back first, I'll go to the post station. Long life is unclear, so look at him with confusion. Forget it, if you don't mind, just follow along. Chen Liqiu took a step ahead. Changsheng carried the rice and followed behind, third brother, what are you doing at the post station? Going to the post station is naturally a postal letter, said Chen Liqiu. Changsheng did not inquire who Chen Liqiu was mailing the letter to, because he had seen Chen Liqiu writing letters during the day. Judging from his demeanor, it seemed that he was writing to his crush. The post station is located in the north of the city. Chen Liqiu handed three wax-sealed letters to the post guard, indicating that they were to be sent to various places. After some bargaining, he paid five tails of postage. Five tails of silver were considered a huge sum of money at this time, equivalent to five thousand won. 
Changsheng never expected that sending letters by mail would be so expensive, nor did he expect Chen Liqiu to be so wealthy, let alone that Chen Liqiu would send three letters at the same time, and the recipients were all women. The two of them had just left the post station when they ran into Lin Daochang and Bachelu who were returning on the road. Seeing Chen Liqiu appear near the post station, Lin Daochang guessed that he might have sent a letter, and his face turned a bit gloomy. Chen Liqiu also had a lot of fear. Did you send the letter again? Lin Daochang frowned and asked. Chen Liqiu awkwardly sneered. How many letters are sent out? Lin Daochang asked again. One letter, only one was sent to Jiang Nan, Chen Liqiu pointed up. Lin Daochang seemed to distrust Chen Liqiu and turned his head to look at Changsheng. Changsheng knew that Lin Daochang was seeking verification from him, and he was not a pedant. Although he felt that it was not good for Chen Liqiu to tell a lie, he did not betray him and quickly nodded. Changsheng was considered half an outsider, and with outsiders present, Lin Daochang did not make Chen Liqiu feel too embarrassed, but just gave him a dissatisfied glance. Seeing Changsheng carrying a cloth bag, Baturu casually grabbed the bag and turned to look down at Changsheng, saying, Little cripple, the third person is not a good person. Don't learn from him. Why am I not a good person anymore? Chen Liqiu pouted. You have been indulging in promiscuity all the way. Before Baturu could finish speaking, Lin Daochang interrupted him, Boss, don't shout around. His name is Changsheng. Oh, Baturu responded and turned to Changsheng, By the way, what's your surname? This sentence silenced Changsheng. He is an abandoned baby, how can he know his surname? At midnight, a few people returned to the inn. The shopkeeper knew that everyone had not had dinner, so he politely asked if he wanted to cook for them. Lin nodded and asked the shopkeeper to prepare the food before delivering it to his room. Lin Daochang then summoned everyone to his room and informed them of the specific departure time for tomorrow morning. He then criticized Li Zhongyong and Chen Liqiu. Although Li Zhongyong compensated the shop owner for the loss, he could not dispel the smell of sulfur and saltpeter in the whole room. Lin Daochang knew that he was promoting MOZ again and also knew that there was a certain risk involved in this matter. Criticizing Chen Liqiu is because he delivered letters through post stations, and if someone with a heart finds out, it can easily expose the whereabouts of everyone. After Changsheng, he had to follow everyone, and some things could not be kept hidden from him all the time. In addition, everyone would be leaving this place tomorrow morning. If Changsheng changed his mind, he would still have time to go back now. Therefore, Lin Daochang briefly told him that he had been searching for something for many years, and sometimes he had no choice but to disturb the deceased. However, they were not tomb robbers and would not take the gold and silver treasures from the tomb. Their clothing and food were all obtained by a few people along the way. After explaining the situation, Lin Daochang asked Changsheng again if he was willing to follow them. After receiving a positive answer, dinner was delivered and everyone began to eat. During the meal, it was inevitable to have a casual conversation. Upon learning that Changsheng had a natural talent for music and could read words, Lin Daochang nodded with relief and said, Although you are not very convenient with your legs and feet, you are rare in valuing emotions and righteousness. You are also knowledgeable and rational, very kind, very kind. Seeing Lin Daochang praising Changsheng, Chen Liqiu beside him quickly gave Changsheng a glance. Changsheng didn't react for a moment. He waited for Li Zhongyong and Tian Zhengong to give him similar looks before realizing it. He quickly put down his dishes, stood up and bent down, arched his hand, and said, Lin Daochang, if you don't mind me being a cripple, I want to learn from you. Seeing his formal request, Lin Daochang smiled and nodded, okay, okay. It's just a chance to meet you. From now on, you can follow us. Seeing that Lin Daochang agreed, Changsheng quickly knelt down and kowtowed solemnly to Lin Daochang. Kowtowing to the teacher is a necessary etiquette, and Lin Daochang did not omit it. He turned around and knelt before him. According to etiquette, to become a disciple, one needs to kneel three to nine times, 
that is, kowtow three to nine times. As he was being worshipped by Changsheng, Lin Dao Chang suddenly frowned slightly, as if he had noticed something. After waiting for a second bow, Lin Dao Chang suddenly frowned and his eyes widened. Without waiting for Changsheng to bow three times, he reached out and pulled him up. All right, all right, don't bow anymore. Not only is Changsheng unclear, but Li Zhongyong and others are also at a loss. Worshipping a teacher is a big deal, and three solemn bowings are essential. They don't understand why Lin Dao Chang suddenly stopped Changsheng from kowtowing to him. Without further explanation, Lin Dao Chang sat down and turned to the crowd, saying, Eat, rest early after finishing, and get up early tomorrow to rush. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Observation and Exploration You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Observation and Exploration Baturu and others have a good impression of Changsheng. Seeing that Lin Dao Chang has officially accepted him, they are sincerely happy for him and also happy to be with him in the future. They have seen everything Changsheng has done for Lao Huang, and it seems that people like him will never betray their faith, shrink back from the battle, and do anything they want. After dinner, everyone started working together, tidying up the dishes on the table, and then went back to their respective rooms. Just as Changsheng was about to leave the room, Lin Dao Chang stopped him and said, Changsheng, please stay for a moment. I have something to ask you. Upon hearing Lin Dao Chang's words, Changsheng quickly stopped and turned around. Although Lin Dao Chang called out to Changsheng, he did not immediately ask, but it was clear that he really had a question to ask but for some reason he had been hesitating. After pondering for a long time, Lin Dao Chang finally spoke up, how come your leg is limping? Changsheng didn't understand why Lin Dao Chang asked this question. He was taken aback for a moment and truthfully said, returning to my master, I asked, in the past, there was thunder in the sky and flying stones splashed up. My leg was broken by the flying stones, and I couldn't get it back to my original position in time afterwards, so I felt a bit limp when walking. After Changsheng finished speaking, Lin Dao Chang nodded slowly and then gave Changsheng a meaningful look. Go back and rest well, he said Changsheng agreed, turned around and walked out, then closed the door with his back. Returning to his own room, Changsheng lay in bed, full of doubts. Although he didn't know what Lin Dao Chang wanted to ask, he knew that what Lin Dao Chang wanted to ask was not why he was lame, but something else. What exactly does Lin Dao Chang want to ask? Why didn't you ask in the end? Upon careful consideration, the reason why Lin Dao Chang only asked that one question and didn't ask again is that the question Lin Dao Chang truly wanted to ask had already been answered in his account of why he was lame. The next day at four o'clock, everyone set off on the road. Baturu picked up the two huge wooden boxes with a large copper stick, and the rest of them carried their own bags. As they had nothing to eat, they took the initiative to carry the rice and pickled vegetables they had purchased last night. This time, the crowd was moving in a southwest direction. As it was still early and there were not many pedestrians on the road, they walked on the official road and waited until dawn. As the number of pedestrians gradually increased, the crowd turned onto the small path. There are multiple reasons why Lin Dao Chang led the crowd on the path. Firstly, he tried to conceal his whereabouts as much as possible. It should be noted that what they were doing was not very bright. Although some tombs were ancient, the owners of the tombs had descendants who survived. Although they did not destroy the tombs, they still moved them in the end. After the descendants of the tomb owners noticed, they were bound to investigate this matter. Furthermore, as Lin Dao Chang had been searching for it many years ago, there was no impenetrable wall in the world, and there were many who knew or suspected that they had obtained a large number of martial art secrets. As the saying goes, Pifu is innocent and innocent, and there are also many who secretly covet and attempt to target him. The last reason is that the wilderness is sparsely populated, making it more convenient for Baturu and others to practice martial arts. Currently, in a chaotic era, it is impossible to wander in the martial arts world without strong martial arts skills. At Dek Hen, the group began to rest and cook. 
Before Lin Daochang accepted Changshan, it was always Chen Liqiu and Tian Jingong who cooked. Although Tian Jingong was a woman, she was not very proficient in cooking. Therefore, cooking was always Chen Liqiu's main task, and Tian Jingong helped. Although Changsheng is young, he has been living alone in recent years. Although he may not be proficient in cooking, he is also skilled in cooking. After a brief observation, he confirmed that he was capable and took the initiative to replace the two. Cooking is very tiring. Chen Liqiu was eager for someone to replace him, so he politely handed over the rice shovel to Changsheng. Tian Zhengong originally wanted to stay and help, but Changsheng refused. He could do things like finding firewood to add fire, cooking and cooking alone. Going out is not as much as staying at home. There are not so many bowls and dishes. One pot of rice and one pot of vegetables are added, and after cooking, they are served in ceramic bowls. Then, the prepared vegetables are covered on top of the rice, and each person has one bowl. No one dislikes diligent people. Seeing Changsheng being so diligent, everyone's liking for him has increased a bit. After eating, Changsheng tidied up everyone's dishes and prepared to take them to the stream for washing. Just then, Lin Daochang stopped him and said, Changsheng, do you want to practice martial arts? Due to Lin Daochang's sudden inquiry, Changsheng was completely unprepared and was unable to answer immediately. Tian Zhengong took the opportunity to take the bowl and chopsticks from his hand and said, Master asked you a question, why didn't you answer? The Tian Zhengong reminded Changsheng that he had just regained his senses and turned to face Lin Daochang. Of course I wanted to, but my legs and feet are not. Before Changsheng could finish speaking, Lin Daochang waved his hand and interrupted his words, don't always hold on to this matter. There are many experts with one arm and one leg in the martial arts world, some of whom cannot even hear or see. As long as you have enough talent and persevere, you can always achieve something. Changsheng was unsure whether what Lin Daochang said was true or mostly comforting, and didn't know how to answer, so he nodded. Practicing qi in martial arts emphasizes innate talent, Lin Daochang pointed to Baturu sitting against a tree and said, Baturu is burly and strong, but his intelligence is a bit poor. He practices external martial arts. After Lin Daochang finished speaking, he pointed to Li Zhongyong and Chen Liqiu, who were preparing to meditate cross-legged. They both have high intelligence, so they are practicing internal mental techniques, he said at this moment, Tian Zhengong was walking towards the stream with a bowl and chopsticks. Lin Daochang pointed at her again and said, Lao Si is a woman, and her physical strength is not as strong as that of a man. However, she has an extraordinary mind and is intelligent and agile. Therefore, what she has practiced is the five elements escape technique and hidden weapons. After Lin Daochang finished speaking, Changsheng nodded again. In fact, Chen Liqiu had already told him yesterday about the martial arts that several people practiced, and it was more detailed than what Lin Daochang had said. Master, I don't quite understand these things. Whatever you think I'm suitable for practicing, just teach me, said Changsheng. Lin Daochang smiled and waved his hand, I can't make the decision for you. The martial arts they practice are all what they want to learn themselves. You should know that the martial arts of killing and beating are different. The martial arts of fighting on the battlefield are also different from those of escorting and walking. What you want to use martial arts to do in the future should be carefully considered and chosen now. Master, I understand what you mean, but I haven't thought about what I want to do in the future, Changsheng said truthfully. After hearing Changsheng's words, Lin Daochang didn't immediately answer. After pondering, he spoke up and asked, Let me ask you, if we hadn't met you the day before yesterday, your old cow would have been slaughtered and eaten by those villagers. What would you do with them after you become successful in martial arts? After Lin Daochang finished speaking, Changsheng frowned tightly and did not answer. Will you hit them or kill them? Lin Daochang asked sternly. Changsheng still didn't answer, but in fact, he already had an answer in his heart, but he didn't dare to say it, afraid that Lin Daochang would blame him for being narrow-dot-minded. 
Due to his young age, Lin Dao Chang couldn't conceal his emotions. He guessed what he was thinking based on his expression, but he didn't show any dissatisfaction. Instead, he calmly asked, If you kill them, will you regret it in the future? Changsheng really wanted to answer Lin Dao Chang's question because he never spoke up. He felt it was impolite not to answer Lin Dao Chang's question, but he really didn't know how to answer. If you don't kill them, will you regret it in the future? Lin Dao Chang asked again. Changsheng vaguely understood Lin Dao Chang's meaning and said, Master, are you asking me if I want to learn the martial arts of hitting or killing, right? Lin Dao Chang nodded. Is there any difference between these two martial arts? Changsheng asked. Very different, Lin Dao Chang nodded. Changsheng hesitated for a long time before shaking his head and saying, Master, I have never fought since I was young, let alone killed anyone. I don't know what to do after learning martial arts. I'm not as tall and imposing as my senior brother. I can't learn external martial arts. Why don't I practice internal mental techniques like my second and third senior brothers? Lin Dao Chang thought for a moment and nodded in agreement, it's okay. Changsheng felt relieved upon hearing these words. Although Lin Dao Chang's voice had always been calm, he always felt that Lin Dao Chang's questions were profound and seemed to be observing and testing him. Seeing that there was still an iron pot that had not been washed, Changsheng carried it to the stream. There is a pond downstream of the stream, and I feel that there may be fish in the pond. Changsheng handed the iron pot to Tian Zhengong to take back and went to the pond to search for earthworms to try fishing. As it was early spring and the temperature was very low, he didn't use a fishing rod, but a plate hook. The so dot called plate hook was a line with many fishing hooks tied to it, without a bamboo float, specifically used to catch fish at the bottom of the water. Changsheng is very good at fishing, not because he likes it too much, but because he is forced by life. In recent years, he has been living alone, unable to eat and struggling, and can only fish if he wants to eat some meat. Just as Changsheng was giving birth to a good hook and sitting in a sheltered place, he was lost in thought. At a glance, he suddenly noticed a strange black figure in the western forest, end of this chapter. Chapter 10 where do monkeys come from? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 Where do monkeys come from at this time, it was early spring, and most of the trees in the mountains were deciduous, with only pine and cypress evergreen. The black shadow he saw appeared in a pine forest, and due to the distance and shading, he couldn't see it very clearly. He could only roughly see that the black shadow had a head similar to a dog, and its fur was black-gray. But that thing is just a head similar to a dog, but it doesn't look like a dog. Most importantly, dogs don't know how to climb trees, and that thing is on trees. There seems to be no animal in this area that is so roughly shaped and can climb trees. Changsheng felt suspicious in his heart and left the pond to walk towards the distant pine forest. He was not sure if the object would bite, so he picked up a wooden stick and held it in his hand while walking. The animal on the tree seemed to be sleeping, lying motionless on the tree. As it was curled up, he couldn't see its appearance, but one thing he could confirm was that it was definitely not a lynx or a house cat. Just a dozen or so feet away from the pine forest, Changsheng accidentally stepped on a rock. The sound of the rock rolling woke up the sleeping animal. Upon hearing the sound, the animal turned around and found Changsheng approaching. It quickly rushed into the depths of the pine forest, leaping several times from the branches and disappearing into the dense forest. Changsheng did not chase after him, but was puzzled and froze in place. Previously, he had already seen the appearance of the animal clearly, and it was indeed not a cat, but a monkey with pointed whiskers. Monkeys were not commonly seen in the north, and there were no monkeys in Dengzhou. The reason why he knew monkeys was because he had seen monkey performers in the county town when he was a child. The escaped monkey seemed to have a collar tied around its neck, indicating that it had a master. It must have escaped from the monkey charmer's hands. Seeing the monkey run away, Changsheng turned around and returned to the edge of the pool. In fact, fishing with a hook did not require guarding, 
but at this moment, Lin Dao Chang and others were sitting cross-legged, and he dared not disturb everyone. In the afternoon, everyone set off on the road, and Changsheng had several yellow croakers strung together with thatch in his hand. This was a scaleless fish that resembled catfish and would make a creaking sound when caught, Lin Dao Chang speaks very little. Among the senior brothers, Chen Lichio, the third in command, is the most talkative, followed by Li Zhongyong, the second in command. Bachelu occasionally interjects, while Tian Zhengong, the fourth in command, only speaks when others are talking to her. The arrival of Changsheng liberated Chen Lichio from the tedious cooking. Chen Lichio had already liked him, and as a token of gratitude, he took the initiative to explain the key to practicing martial arts to him. Chen Lichio's so dot called key was only one sentence. More than 90% of people use their right hand, and when fighting, they are also accustomed to using one hand to attack. If your left hand can be as flexible as your right hand, you can beat more than 90% of ordinary people. Although Changsheng nodded, the expression on his face was not very convincing. Chen Lichio picked up a stone and threw it with his left hand, then picked up another piece and handed it to Changsheng. Come, Lao Wu, you can also try it with your left hand. Changsheng took the stone and threw it with his left hand, not only close but also without any accuracy. Look at your throwing posture, it's like an old lady, Chen Lichio smiled. Forever speechless, awkwardly smirking. Seeing Changsheng feeling embarrassed, Li Zhongyong spoke up and said, what the third person said makes sense. You must learn to use your left hand, and in the future, you will be able to use both hands flexibly, which can take a big advantage. Changsheng nodded in response. Prior to this, he had never noticed that his left hand was very inflexible compared to his own. It was only after being reminded by the two that he realized that his left hand was not only weak in strength, but also very clumsy. Previously, when Lin Daochang was talking to Changsheng, Li Zhongyong and Chen Lichio were nearby. They both heard their conversation and knew that Changsheng wanted to study the Hunyuan Divine Art. However, Hunyuan Divine Art is an exquisite Taoist mental technique, and to cultivate Hunyuan Divine Art, one must be familiar with the yin and yang five elements. Changsheng did not even know the basic principles of gold, wood, water, fire, and earth, so the two could only talk to him about the most basic principles of yin and yang. Changsheng is very intelligent. He can firmly remember complex songs by listening to them once, and he can also remember what the two of them say. At first, he only listened quietly to the two of them, but by evening, not only did the five elements complement each other in his heart, but he could also recite the eight trigrams and nine palaces one by one. In order to avoid disputes, many people choose deserted paths and rest freely. Tonight, they are lucky enough to encounter an abandoned yentai, which is the beacon tower used for transmitting messages during wartime. The beacon tower is the official term, and the villagers call it yentai. As it is a temporary establishment, the soldiers stationed there will leave after the war is over. At this time, it is the agricultural idle season, and ordinary people only eat two meals a day. This is also the case for everyone. In the evening, not only is there an extra fish for dinner, but there is also a lot of fungus in the pickled vegetables. Although it is not the season for mushroom growth, there are still dried fungus, which will be collected by Changsheng along the way. After dinner, everyone began to cross their knees and meditate. Changsheng couldn't practice qi and had to lie quietly on the side. Although everyone deliberately slowed down to take care of Changsheng along the way, the long walk still made Changsheng very tired, and he quickly fell asleep after lying down. Because Changsheng cannot practice qi, he is unable to see things at night, and everyone is unable to travel at night. In order to accommodate him, for the next few days, everyone will travel day and night, traveling 60 or 70 miles a day. Although the journey was tiring, Changsheng never complained or complained. Unlike the villagers, Lin Daochang and others never looked at him with strange eyes, let alone insulting and mocking him like villagers. Apart from thinking of Lao Huang, Changsheng's mood was still very good most of the time. 
Due to the fact that the martial arts practiced by everyone did not come from the hands of Taoist Lin, he did not personally guide them. In fact, he had never even read the martial arts secret books held by everyone. The secret collection of the Hunyuan divine art has been destroyed, not by human intervention, but because the things in the ancient tomb cannot be seen clearly. After the bamboo slips are unearthed and exposed to the wind, they will soon decay. Fortunately, Li Zhongyong and Chen Liqiu have memorized the full text of the Hunyuan divine art, and the two have orally and silently memorized it. In fact, they did not want Changxing to start enlightenment and study now, but just to let him remember it earlier. The two people not only taught the Hunyuan divine skill to Changsheng, but also the lightness skill body method. The lightness skill in the Jianghu is also indispensable. The lightness skill Baturu studied is called Eight Steps to Catch Cicadas. This body method is not superior, but it is driven by spirit to speed up running. Li Zhongyong and Chen Liqiu practiced the same type of lightness skill, called Chasing the Wind Ghost Step, which was obtained from an ancient tomb during the Jin dynasty. According to Chen Liqiu, the biggest characteristic of this type of lightness skill is that it does not follow a straight line. It is said that when practiced to the extreme, not only can it move as fast as the wind, but it can also transform into a clone and follow like a shadow. The body technique of Lao Si Tian Jin Gong is the five elements escape technique, which includes not only lightness skills but also lightness skills. Changsheng has problems with his legs and feet, making it difficult even to walk in a straight line. The body technique called chasing the wind ghost step is just right for him to study. With Li Zhongyong and Chen Liqiu as mentors, Lin Daochang was also happy and relaxed. Although Lin Daochang rarely showed any worries, Changsheng could still see that he had a serious concern. He didn't know exactly what Lin Daochang was looking for, but one thing he could confirm was that Lin Daochang had been searching for so many years and had not found what he wanted to find. As the saying goes, in times of prosperity, mediocre officials emerge, in times of chaos, heroes emerge, in times of chaos, it is unknown whether heroes emerge. However, in times of chaos, bandits emerge. During their journey, they encountered more than one group of mountain bandits. Although these bandits discovered them, they only watched from a distance and did not come forward to intercept them. The reason was simple. The master and disciples were all just trainers, and with a black tower like Bachelu, the bandits thought they could not defeat them. Although most of the time people walk on small paths, they occasionally encounter passers-by, and once they even meet up with a few monks who have become friends. In his early years, Changsheng had seen monks and Taoists fight, so in his impression, the relationship between monks and Taoists was not good, and Lin Daochang's disregard for those monks also confirmed this. Whenever there are doubts, Changsheng likes to ask Chen Liqiu. Chen Liqiu is kind and straightforward, and he says whatever he wants. It was only after he explained that Changsheng realized that monks and Taoists were not in line with ancient times, and the reasons were complex. It was unclear for a while, but the conflict between the two sides broke out forty years ago. At that time, the reigning emperor was Emperor Wuzong, who believed that Buddhist disciples did not work hard and were detrimental to the country. Therefore, the whole country destroyed Buddhism, destroyed temples, and forced monks to return to secular life. The situation of monks during that period can only be described as tragic. In theory, when Emperor Wuzong believed in it, Taoism should have risen. After all, there was support from the imperial court behind it, but Taoism also had unruly disciples. A Taoist named Xiao Guizhen, who was ignorant and inexperienced, offered him alchemy as a tribute to Emperor Wuzong. However, he did not know how to refine alchemy at all. The alchemy he produced was poisonous, and as a result, he poisoned Emperor Wuzong to death. Upon the death of Emperor Wuzong, Emperor Xuanzong ascended the throne and immediately punished Zhao Guizhen severely, which also affected other Taoists. Therefore, the current situation of the Taoists is not very good, end of this chapter.